All right, let's have a look at how we can parameterize our um, source queries and by adding um, high watermark parameterization to our queries. So I'm just going to head over to projects here on my source project and I'm just going to add a parameter to sales or the header. I'll do the rest, but I'll show you how to do one right now. Click on sales or the header here, uh, go into it and you'll see the parameters tab. We'll click that. We'll say add a parameter to this object. We we'll add a parameter. What column do we want to parameterize? Well, I want to parameterize the uh, modified date. And what is the param name? I want to call the parameter. Now, this is the name that SSIS will use internally. Um, and I'm just going to go last load date. In other words, what is the last load date? The operator here, I'm going to have greater than because every time I load, I want to load greater than that, than the previous loaded value. The default, what is the first time that I run my package? What is the parameter that I, I want to have the, all the data greater than that? No, so if you've got data that you want to start at a certain point, the first time you load, you can do this. The data type here for dates, uh, funny enough, is string. The reason for that is because SSI is, doesn't handle dates very well when it comes to parameters, so we've decided to use strings. The parameter SQL here, this is the SQL statement that we need to run at the end of the package to actually get the next load date. So. I've prepared one here already, which is basically going to go and say, give me the max at at this. Wherever we use at at this, it will replace that with the name that you've, the column name. So this will be replaced with modified date. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, give me the last, the max modified date, and then convert it to um, a date time. So as you can see, that's the parameter that I have. And I will go and say it's saved. So now I have, a, now I've parameterized this. So I'll go ahead here and do that for all the others and I'll just show you what that looks like. Actually what I've decided to do is um, show you how you can use the combination of the Bimoflex Excel app and our, um, uh, sorry, the Bimoflex app and the Excel add-in that we've got. So the Excel add-in is great for doing things like bulk editing. Um, so if you have bulk editing operations, you want to use the, bulk, the Excel add-in. So in the Bimo, in Bimo Studio, You'll see here on the Bimoflex tab, you'll see the Bimoflex metadata editor. So I'm going to click that, and this will open up Excel. Right, so the Excel add in here, you have a Bimoflex ribbon tab here. We click on the metadata connection. So we click on the metadata connection here, which will bring the document actions up. You'll need to set this up by default. These are the default settings, but what you'll need to do is you'll need to set up your server again, Windows or SQL authentication what is the database and the customer version. So I'm just going to hit update here. And if you only have one customer version, I'll default to that. Obviously, we've got the Bimoflex trial version one. And then the next thing we need to do is do a get all entities. So this goes and retrieves all of our metadata from a database and brings that into Excel. So then we now have that um, available for bulk editing in Excel. So I'm going to close that up. And as you can see here, I'll have my parameters. And this is where Excel actually is great. Because, um, you know, if I wanted to go and add the parameters for all the other tables, um, what I would need to do here is, you know, uh, go in the app and click uh, click through all of the options. But in Excel, I'm just going to go and copy this down. And, you know, I'll copy a you know, couple down here. And the only diff thing I have to do, because we've got this at at this, it's actually awesome. So all, all I need to do here is I'll start at the top. I'll just go address, grab the next one. You get the picture, right? So get the next one. Get customer address is the next one. Product, product category, product description. They all have modified date um, and product model and product model description. And lastly, Grab one more, and I'll go and go and grab sales order detail. Then what you do is you hit the set current sheet, and this pushes that metadata back up to the database. Again, let me go into Bimoflex app now just to show you that how these things work. If I go into sales order detail here, got the columns parameters. I need to maybe hit the refresh button here to get all of that metadata back. Get the sales order detail parameters. And there you'll see the parameter. So one of the things that you need to um, uh, appreciate is that if the, the application is aware of all the changes it's making, if I'm going ahead and use the Excel app and make changes in the Excel app, I may have to go back in here and hit this refresh button, which actually refreshes the metadata from the database. 
So just be aware of that.